Electromotive Company, EMC, was founded in 1922. Through the 20s and 30s, they made several custom train sets and small production box cabs. As the Depression set in, EMC started having financial problems. In 1930, General Motors bought both EMC and Winton Engine Company in order to get into the diesel-electric locomotive business. GM created the good old Winton 201A engine, the basis for EMC's future locomotives, including the switchers. The early models followed a simple naming scheme. Of two letters in the model number, the first letter was either an S for 600 horsepower or an N for 900 horsepower. The second letter was either a C for cast frame or a W for welded frame. The SW and SC were the first switchers to be produced. They both had eight-cylinder Winton 201As, producing 600 horsepower as the name suggests. The only difference, of course, is the cast versus welded frame. Both were introduced in 1936 and were built for various railroads up until 1939. The SW was the most popular of the two, with 76 units having been sold to various railroads. As for the SC, 43 were sold. 1937 brought the introduction of the NC and NW. Just as before, they are pretty much the same, besides the production of the frames. This time, however, a V12 201A was added, producing 900 horsepower. Five NCs and eight NWs were built. Due to the early plans not quite being ready, the electrical equipment in all of these units varies. Some had General Electric equipment and others had Westinghouse. Neither models had multiple unit connections. The NC1 was introduced in the same year. This model added multiple unit connections, allowing the ability to chain these locomotives together and control their power from one cab. The NC1 also standardized on a Westinghouse electrical system. Five were built. Two NC2s were built for the Missouri Pacific Railroad. The NC2 is exactly the same as the NC1, but EMC claimed that the wiring is different. The NW1, also coming out in 1937, was the most popular of the N series, with 27 having been built. It had a longer hood and a general electric system. The NW1A is a variation that has EMC made traction motors. Three of those were built. The NW4 added a longer section between the cab and the hood to accommodate a steam generator. Both of the two that were produced were scrapped in 1961. Going back to 1936 again, EMC created the T unit, T standing for transfer. In this design, they plot the cab in the middle and stuck two V12 Wintons on either side. These are the same 900 horsepower engines used in the NW and NC. Having two of these created 1800 horsepower. Only one T-unit was ever made, and it was for the Illinois Central Railroad. At one point, the locomotive had to be sent back because the frame had sagged over time and needed repairs. Unfortunately, the only T-unit ever produced was scrapped in 1950. 1938 marked a very important time in the locomotive company's history. After two years of planning and designing, the great 567 engine was finally complete. This prime mover was more powerful and came in a greater array of configuration. Use of the Winton stopped and all subsequent productions used the 567. Also around this time, GM finalized its ownership of EMC and renamed their locomotive division to the familiar EMD. The SW1 was one of the first to use the new EMD 567. It used a V6 variant that kept the same 600 horsepower. 661 SW1s were built over its long lifespan of 14 years. The NW2 was naturally the new 900 horsepower variant, however, it used a V12 567 that actually produced 1000 horsepower. It is very similar to the SW1 in other aspects, but sold a much more impressive 1145 units. The NW3 took the previous design and added a steam generator. Seven of these were built for the Great Northern Railway. In 1946, they further expanded the design by adding a new hood, sticking a steam generator in it, and calling it the NW5. EMD also took their NW2 design and created a cow-calf set called the TR. The two engines created a total of 2,000 horsepower. Later, after World War II, EMD released the TR2 and TR3. 
The TR2 used the same cow-calf system, but the TR3 added an extra calf for a total of 3,000 horsepower. The TR1 is unrelated to the previous TR models mentioned. It uses a 16-cylinder 567 in a cow-calf configuration to produce 2,700 horsepower. Two pairs were made for the Illinois Central. By this point, the two-letter naming system was kind of useless. EMD standardized on welded frames, and their switchers were starting to exceed the original 600 and 900 horsepower specifications. After a while, they started putting all of their new switchers under the SW name. In 1949, to replace the NW2, EMD made the SW7. This new locomotive had a 567A that produced 1200 horsepower. 489 of these were sold. In the next year, they then created a cow-calf set based off of it, called the TR4. One year later, we now have the SW9. From the SW7, it removed some hood vents and had a 1200 horsepower 567B. In typical fashion, they also made a cow-calf set that was called the TR5. In 1994, Amtrak got a hold of some SW9s and reclassified them as SW1000Rs. The SW8 has an 8-cylinder 567B, making only 800 horsepower. Most notably, it was used by the U.S. Army during the Korean War. They also made a version with a hydraulic transmission called the DH-2, and there was also a mandated cow-calf variant. In 1954, EMD created a new lineup using the 567C engine, the SW600, 900, and 1200. They used 6, 9, and 12 cylinder 567s, producing 600, 900, and 1200 horsepower respectively. The 1200 was the most popular of the three, with 1056 built. And although none were actually built, you gotta know that the 1200 had a mandated cow calf variant. In 1958, GMD, EMD's Canadian subsidiary, built 101 GMD 1s. This locomotive had a 1200 horsepower 567 and came in variants with either BB trucks or A1A A1A trucks. This was the only locomotive GMD produced themselves. In 1960, EMD took a regular switcher body and stuck a standard cabin hood on it. This was the EMD RS1325. The RS is for road switcher, and the 1325 indicates the horsepower brought by the V12 567D engine. The hood was made to store an optional steam generator, but only two locomotives were produced, and they were made for freight service. Currently, the Illinois and Midland Railroad owns the two, and apparently this one fell over once. 1966 was a big year for EMD. They had finally developed the successor to the 567, the EMD 645. During this time, EMD released a variety of new locomotives, including the SW1000 and SW1500. The model numbers suggest the horsepower rating of these new units. Both are quite a bit taller than the previous SW models, and this caused a bit of a problem for some industrial operators who had areas with small clearance. Two years later, EMD released the SW1001, which lowered the height and the walkways of the 1000. They did this by basically sticking the design on the underframe of an SW1200. Some modifications had to be made because the 645 was a bit bigger than the 567. In the 1960s and 70s, there was a decline in need for these smaller single-purpose switchers. Many big railroads wanted more flexible machines that could do both yard and road movement. EMD tried taking the SW1500 design and adding new Blomberg trucks. Named the SW1504, this design could bring the locomotive up to higher road speeds, but only one customer was ever interested in purchasing any, Mexico's own National Railroad. To further their attempt of making more flexible machines, EMD created the MP15 in 1974. It is very similar to the SW1500, but has a 645E engine and the high-speed Blombergs. EMD wanted this new model to be more of a multi-purpose locomotive, hence the MP. It was marginally successful selling 351 units, so they created a version with an AC alternator. This was called the MP15AC, and the old version was now referred to as the MP15DC. 
The AC is 1.5 feet longer than the DC and has some fans and intakes relocated from the front. A variation was produced that kept the same 1500 horsepower of the previous MP models, but used a turbocharged 8-cylinder 645E3 rather than a non-turbocharged 12-cylinder 645E. This was called the MP15T. As the decades progressed, the usage of end cab switchers declined. Nowadays, most are still in use in small industrials and short lines. Some Class 1 railroads did make an effort to revamp some older SWs, and this did bring some new life, but they've mostly moved on to more modern machines.